What's going on everybody? My name is Tomas and this one is a video on how I color grade my projects in Adobe Premiere Pro. Before I get started, I want to preface this video by saying I am no professional colorist. So with that said, everything that I have here, I have learned by just digging around in Adobe SpeedGrade. I do all my color correction within Adobe SpeedGrade for my projects that I am composing within Adobe Premiere. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and start this project off by opening something that I'm currently working on at the moment. Uh, so I have all this uh, all this source footage within my sequence that I want to color grade. Before we move on, I would say to save your color grading until the end of your project. Uh, we're at the end of our project and I'm ready to color grade within Adobe SpeedGrade. So within my project, I'm going to go ahead and go up to File and then there's this selection right here direct link to Adobe SpeedGrade. At this point Adobe Premiere is going to ask me to save my project as it is now. I'm going to go ahead and click yes and then it's going to go ahead and close out uh, Premiere Pro and then it's going to open up uh, SpeedGrade. So here's my project. I'm going to go ahead and drag this up to create some space on the color wheels here um, so we can look at uh, the preference panes within here. One thing you will notice is there is a lot of grayed out elements within SpeedGrade because of the direct linking that's occurring. I know that if you open SpeedGrade on your own and open a project within it, uh, there's a lot more uh, robustness to the program itself. Again, I'm not a professional colorist, so I, I try to avoid that because I try to make my projects as simple and as straightforward as possible because I simply don't have hours upon hours to spend within my project color grading because you could definitely do so if, uh, if, if you wanted to. And before I go any further, I'm going to also get on my soapbox and say that you should try to shoot your footage as clean and as accurate when you're recording before you get into post-production. It'll just make your life a whole lot easier. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about the interface. Uh, right here is where you're going to see your displays. So this is what I'm going to use as reference. Uh, to my color grading within my project. Uh, here is the timeline, which is pretty much pretty much self-explanatory. So you can scrub just like in Adobe Premiere or any other timeline that you're familiar with. Uh, here is um, the layers or what color grading is being applied. And here is your library stuff. And you can also have a, a mask selection as well. I haven't delved into here. I haven't. Uh, these are quite advanced settings. And if you know anything about them, feel free to do so. The power of speed grade in color grading is uh, pretty much still a mystery to me but I know how to get by using the basics. I have my project here and I want to color grade this. The first thing that I do is that I go in and I recognize how many instances I have of this uh, footage. So I have unboxing underscore one and, and there's there's many chops and elements to this unboxing here. This took me a while to learn. I, I would go to each clip and color, try to color grade and color match it to the, the previous one. There is one very important button that you should be aware of. It's, it's called this master clip right here. So before I even start doing anything with color grading, I select master clip. With that selected, any color grading that's applied to this file and it's going to reach across all the similar files because essentially this is the same file. It's just chopped up. With that selected, I utilize presets, color presets that will help you get the most accurate color. If you're as a novice as I am, I like to utilize these things uh, pretty much all the time. They're very helpful. So all you have to do is hover over them and you can see what will be the result if I select that. I think tritoning worked really well for this when I was playing around with it earlier. Um, tritoning brings out enough saturation in, in my video and I think um, I like that. And Go ahead and click that and that will be applied across my whole project. One thing that you'll notice is that when I, when I go to another one, another uh, uh, clip within my uh, timeline, it jumps over to clip. You just have to be aware of that. I think you can uh, default select that. I haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. If you know, feel free to drop me a comment down below letting me know how to do that. I would be freaking uh, indebted to you. If so I have applied tritoning across my project. One thing that will be a key element, I'm going to go ahead and undo that last one. So everything is back to the flat color that I shot this originally in. 
Um, one thing that you'll notice is that if you if you click try toning and then you drag and you notice that your color automatically changes. You see that my hands have definitely lost some life. Maybe I'm losing blood behind the camera or whatnot. But uh, one thing that you'll notice is that try toning is applied to this clip only, and your key uh, factor to troubleshooting that is that that is assigned to the clip only. You'll want to go ahead and remove this dry toning color application to this clip. You can do so by highlighting it and hitting the delete key and that'll remove it or you can hit reset which will reset all of uh, the applications in which that tri toning was applied. The thing with that is is that tri toning remains. Um, I like clean projects so I go ahead and delete that off of there. I'm going to go ahead, click the master clip, and then I'm going to apply tritoning across it. And I can make adjustments to this. Within this uh, preference pane, you can mess with shadows, midtones, highlights. And within the each individual item within that, you can, you can mess with the gain, the gamma, and the offset, uh, your input saturation, your pivot, your contrast. Again, these are, these are things that I'm not completely sure of because I'm not a professional colorist. But if you mess with it, you can drag up the final saturation and you see that it's affecting it. And that's really over exaggerated, but it actually looks kind of good in my opinion. Again, that's being applied across the whole master clip. So when you use these style presets, uh, don't feel like you're locked into those style presets by any means because you can go into each shadow, midtone, and highlight, or even the overall feeling that you're trying to communicate through your project and mess with those individual settings. So uh, with that set, uh, that's the way I handle the same clip within the same project. Now, the tricky part is, what if I have two clips that are differing? Um, and you can see my hands have, again, lost life. As you go across these two clips, one way to handle that is uh, matching those. So if I remember the exact settings that I have done, but it can get really hairy if you go in and you know mess with the actual style presets uh, and customize those. So one way to handle that, and the one, the one way that I do handle that is that I keep my, my style presets edits pr fairly simple so I can remember what it is that I've done. Uh, there is this neat little trick that if you hold command or control while you're hovered over this, you can click and drag another playhead. So one is associated here. This is my source that I am using to match the clip here. The clip that you intend on messing with the color grading on has to be selected. So always keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and select try toning for that. And again, I didn't utilize master clip. So that that tritoning is only going to be applied to that one clip. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and undo that, selecting this, highlighting it, deleting it, and then selecting master clip just in case there are any other unboxing underscore zero three clips within my project. So with that selected, master clip selected, I feel comfortable that I can go ahead and select tritoning. And there is no end to matching this clip. So the one that's highlighted is the one, the source uh, playhead that I'm using to match. So I can grab multiple playheads in and match it across my whole project. So I can keep going and going and making sure my color is consistent across my project. Now, how do I get rid of these playheads? Well, you grab here and you drag it into an area where the X appears and they start to disappear. So that's how you handle those. Now that I've finished color grading my whole project, I'm going to go ahead and send it back to Adobe Premiere. And to do so, there's the render button up here, and then it's going to open within Adobe Premiere. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes, and my project is color graded. Before I close, what if I'm looking at my clips and I'm like, I don't like this color grading at all. I, I really don't. Um, it's just not working. It's really oversaturated. Uh, my shadows are way deep and it looks just ridiculous. I don't want you to have the impression that you can go in and just delete the Lumetri um, effect that has been applied to the clip. Um, because essentially Adobe SpeedGrade applies uh, a so-called Lumetri effect onto the clip. If you just if you try to unselect the clip or unselect the effect, it's not going to do anything. Even if you delete it, it's not going to change. To bring your project to its original color, 
that you were messing with prior to sending it to SpeedGrade, you gotta go back to Adobe SpeedGrade to remove these effects. So, with, you know, you go up to File and Direct Link to Adobe SpeedGrade. So it's dumping me back in there. Now, again, you might be scrubbing and be like, where, where was my tritoning applied? You know, where was my style preset applied? I don't see it. Again, click the master clip. With it applied to the master clip, if I delete the tritoning from there, it's gonna reset all my clips. And one thing you have to keep in mind, you have to do this for each. So I'm gonna go into my master clip and remove the color effect. So now my project is back to its original state. I know it's a little bit cumbersome, but that's how I figured out how to work with this. If you know a better way, again, leave me a comment down below. I'm always looking to learn new ways of managing my projects. Until then, this is how I do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click render. It's gonna send it back to Adobe Premiere Pro. And my project is back to its original state. Well, that about does it for me in this one, everybody. If you like this video, please feel free to leave me a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave me a thumbs down. Leave me a comment down below letting me know why and what it is that I can improve on. I really appreciate everybody's feedback. I'm always looking to improve. I hope you took something away from this video. I hope it helps you finally take the plunge in direct linking your Adobe Premiere projects within a speed grade to make color correction edits to your projects. I really appreciate everybody's support. I thank you for watching this video. I hope you've taken something away from this, uh, learned something new so you can stretch yourself and uh, try to make the best possible content that you can do. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. You all take care. I'll see you in the next one.